thank you everybody for taking your time at this hour of the day to sit and listen to someone talking online uh i've been asked to uh, talk about my journey uh as an animator and uh, my journey from being a student and studying animation and then practicing animation and then talk about some of my projects that i've been doing uh so i don't think we should waste some time i think we should not waste time and we should just begin right away so i'll share my screen shubhangi is that okay yes yeah well, so the first slide, since the journey begins from where animation begins, uh, before I joined animation, uh, all I knew about animation was perhaps Jungle Book and Tom and Jerry and nothing more than that. And uh, uh, I tried to approach animation as a clean slate and I was ready to take in whatever I was being given by my teachers and my institute. So <laughs> the journey begins in Ahmedabad. Uh, this is my temple where I learned all I learned about animation and then I continue to practice. Uh, I also go there and teach. So there is a sort of a cycle that I feel that happens. Uh, and I am talking about NID. So I must mention the animation faculty that have influenced me and influenced the way I think and the kind of work I do. Uh, this lady is Nina Sabnani. She was my HOD. This lady is Benita Desai. She was a she was also a faculty in the animation department. That's a young Nina. That's a young Benita Desai. That's Nina now. That's Bini now. Uh, these people have really influenced me in terms of the way they approached animation and the way they taught animation. Uh, that's now Dr. Nina Sabnani. Uh, her films have really inspired me in the way she approaches storytelling and ethnographic research she uses to construct stories. It's a fascinating session if we ever get a chance to hear Nina Sabnani talking about storytelling and how she constructs the stories uh, so that. Okay, now for me, the journey of animation actually begins in the year 1824. And I have written down some stuff. So the year was 1824. The scientific tempers across the globe were at their curious best. The first industrial revolution was about to conclude. The light bulb was still to be invented. The early impressionists were around the corner. Just then, a British physician, natural theologian, lexiographer, and a gentleman more widely known for his thesaurus, the Roget's Thesaurus, if you know the book and not online, the book Thesaurus, uh, the, the Roget's Thesaurus in a book form. Uh, Peter Mark Roget uh, made the world's first thesaurus and he's more, more popular for that. But he presented a revolutionary paper at the Royal Society about a very peculiar optical illusion. Okay. Uh, the optical illusion that Peter Mark Rogers was talking about was this concept called persistence of vision. Okay. And basically, persistence of vision speculates that our retina holds on to an image for a split second more than when we actually see it. Okay. And that is why when we flash a series of sequential images onto your you know, eyes, we see an illusion of motion, like one image, another image, another image, another image. Okay, and in some way, uh, animation uh, is is motion is perceived in the human mind uh, because of this particular trait of human biology. Okay, so uh, when we when we talk about animation or cinema, uh, moving images, uh, it's a series of still images that are projected uh, that your retina re uh, takes in. And uh, because of that split second, the image that holds on and the next image comes in, uh, you you perceive motion. Now, this was a, was a very fascinating concept for me, even as a student. And when the world got to know about it in 1824 and the way the human race is, uh, people started going all out and trying to figure this out as to the possibilities of this business. And so by 1824, the Thoma trope is figured out, you know, the bird on one side, the cage on the other side, and how if you move them, your eyes retain, I mean, your eyes see the bird in the cage. Yeah, uh, more toys were brought in. Just a moment, I just... Yeah, the movie Ola and the, the these, these toys that, that came in, which would sort of move 
and you would perceive you would perceive motion and uh, that by the time these things came in uh, people thought it was witchcraft you know how is it possible that you start seeing things in motion yeah then comes uh, the the movie ola by 1877 where uh, you don't need to do all of that you just play this disc and in the mirror you can see in the mirror you can see motion and moving images okay i'm going to take you through this timeline 90 1877 then by 1906 the first animated film using stop motion photography was created this was largely done on a blackboard with chalk okay it is quite sweet it's available on youtube so 1906 by 1911 a gentleman called winsor mckay you know uh, he he sort of started animating and uh, you know bringing things to life and saying hey guys this is possible a series of drawings he made so the first thing that he animated was an uh, was a dinosaur so this is the year 1911 then comes 1926 and there is a german lady called lotte reniger uh who made a whole feature film okay called the adventures of prince ahmed in silhouettes okay and there you can see the way she did it yeah so there was sort of a revolution happening from 1824 by 1926 uh the first feature film was there and the multiplane camera and you can have backgrounds and foregrounds etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah and then comes in uncle walt disney okay who is going to enter the scene and rule the roost so walt disney makes steamboat willie by 1928 which is quite a revolution because it's got sound also along with it uh before that there was orchestra that would play along along with the 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 moving images and by the year 1937 uh disney you know sort of sort of you know killed it you know by making the first animated colored feature film snow white and the seven dwarfs if you see it even today it feels borderline state of the art you know and so there was a revolution happening in the in the animation industry and uh, walt disney was on top of his game and a new industry called the animation film industry had arrived there were lots of animators lots of job opportunities uh, but largely male dominated yeah that's that's snow white for you in some gifs yeah i mean the quality is gorgeous and the animation is immaculate while all of this was happening in uh, in the, in with the, all these disneys and the lotte renegers etc and winsor mckay uh, something was cooking in canada okay and uh, the national film board of canada set up an institute you know uh, an organization by in 1940 and uh, gave a gentleman called norman mclaren he he was made the head of it and uh, to explore possibilities of animation as not just what disney does but what else can we do with moving images you know what are the possibilities so th in this particular image what you can see uh, norman mclaren is painting sound frame by frame okay uh, and norman mclaren has done a lot of all the crazy stuff but some concepts of norman mclaren which we received as students at our institute uh were that animation is not the art of drawings that move but the art of movements that are drawn okay now uh when i first heard this statement uh, i didn't really get it you know uh you have to sort of make friends with the medium to understand what's going on so this gentleman is saying it's not the art of drawing and i thought it was all about drawing really then he comes up with another one and he says what happens between each frame is much more important than what exists on each frame now again as a student i i i couldn't understand what's going on and what is he trying to say really but it sort of all sort of comes together and makes a lot of sense okay now these are the kind of explorations that norman mclaren is doing and he's just animating dots and he's animating dots to sound and he's making them move i would say this is sort of the birth of motion graphics you know where he's using forms and pure forms uh he's just using lines and lines are moving the first time i saw this film i fell asleep you know uh now <clears throat> when i look back and now that i teach animation also uh these things feel like bible you know 
uh then from the national film board of canada there's another lady very very inspirational highly experimental playing with the medium uh she's had a huge influence on my life and my work as a professional and as an animator uh caroline leaf uh this particular thing is a film called two sisters which is scratched on on exposed film enamel you know she made more films using sand as a medium so what is happening is that storytelling and the medium that is being used so like disney has put it into the whole business of cartoon animation whereas stuff at film board of canada uh something else is going on you know uh, these people are more of thinking animators where they are picking up uh, narratives and figuring out the right medium to tell that story oh these are some more experimental works frames from caroline leaf's film the interview oh you'll have to okay so i come out of college i work as a professional this is like a like a collage of some of my works uh but the thing to be noted is each one is is a different style and a different treatment and a different method of animation and uh that's the name of my studio i run madan water studio here in gurgaon and uh <clears throat> i'd been doing this for about 12 to 13 years and uh trying to be excited about the medium and trying to be excited about my projects and trying to figure out new ways of telling narratives figuring out what is the context coming out of the context picking up the context and figuring out uh, how how does one translate this into a, a unique visual language blah blah uh, which which sort of worked for me because uh, each time i was doing a project i was so nervous like a beginner and trying to figure out how will we do this uh, that uh, by the time the by the time i had figured the medium out sort of uh, the project got over you know and uh, another project came and then another set of new challenges arrived and i sort of uh, restricted myself from following a a fixed method of doing things because then that that the monotony sort of kills the excitement of of doing what i do okay and then what happens is that uh, by chance uh someone approaches me to to paint walls for a hospital and uh for a children's ward of a hospital called lok nayak jay prakash which is on in in new delhi it's right at the border of new delhi and old delhi and uh, it came from a recommendation so i couldn't refuse it saying that hey we are animators filmmakers we don't do wall painting uh, but it it came through a reference so i had to go uh, and just go look at the space uh, and and then tell them that sorry we can't do this but what happened was that uh wait yeah that that's the hospital look like lnjp it's called uh but what happened was that uh when i saw the space it was huge okay and uh the space was so huge that uh, i i was like hey you can paint animation on this so i tried to convince my team that uh, guys we are not painting walls we are painting animation uh, they think that we are painting the walls so let them think that and let them pay us for painting their walls but we are actually making a film okay uh this got my team very excited acha we are making a film but we are making it on the sly we are not telling anyone i said no we'll be shooting it so what we did is we painted frame by frame animation on the wall uh for children's ward so now what kind of story do you tell it can't have violence it can't have deceit it can't have etc etc so the age old story of that uh, from the esops and the panchatantra as well uh the hair and the tortoise came for rescue you know it's a, it's just a simple simple story uh with, with great moral and sort of everybody knows that story so we headed and we started painting painting the walls okay and uh, we said our theme is uh, the hair and the tortoise so you will see some some hair somewhere you'll see the tortoise somewhere uh, you'll see some carrots here and there and it looked pretty and and the client was sort of happy ha ha ye to colorful lag raha hai ha theek hai aap banaiye uh but what they didn't know that every frame was animated you know uh and uh yeah uh, then i added a caterpillar and we had a lot of fun fun doing this yeah the the tortoise is moving but each frame is an animated frame where where it's it's moving it's moving like that okay uh this happened 
the film was made <clears throat> it looked quite charming and we were quite also quite surprised with the end result because we had never seen anything like this before and uh, what happened was that if you if you i don't have the image right now here but if you stood like that and went round and round you could you could sort of perceive animation you know you could perceive motion yeah you could see you could not really see the tortoise walking but you could see the hair jumping you know and then i entered the film in a couple of festivals and to my great surprise i ended up winning all those festivals you know and each time uh, when i went up to receive the the prize the gentleman who was offering it to me said uh, kuch samajh mein to nahi aaya magar aapne jo bhi kiya kafi interesting kiya you know karte rahiye karte rahiye bahut acha shabash shabash so th- that was a very um, that was very encouraging you know and we were like oh something happened okay then i was presenting this at spa and uh, some kid uh, got up in the audience and said sir what you're doing is called expanded animation so i was like oh really uh, what is expanded animation so he said why don't you google it and i just stood there and i opened my phone and i googled expanded animation and here they were talking about something which we had just done you know and i got like whoa and then i called up nina and i called up bini and i said do you guys know about this you know i mean do you guys know about this expanded animation so they said, yeah of course we know you know so whatever whatever so this 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 idea became quite exciting and it sort of got us off the kind of work that we were doing as a studio uh, making 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 ad films and making these 15 seconders 30 seconders etc etc and uh, actually the whole team got very excited especially after after winning that mumbai international film festival we were like on the on cloud 9 yeah the caterpillar so uh, now we got ambitious and uh, we were lucky we got another project this time it was a huge huge uh, college for applied sciences for women in in delhi again so this time the theme was women so we will of course paint your walls but we'll also give you a film you know and 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 the since the the, the client was the same guy who had given us this project so he was quite eager to see what happens now okay and uh, we went ahead and we tried to experiment a little bit more you know and this time we were not shooting it on the sly we we got you know those mechanized robotic arm cameras and they were shooting as you were painting and all of that yeah uh, in amdabad i had seen the hussein doshi gufa i'm not comparing this to that at all uh but but this whole business of architecture and animation so there was this six story spiral staircase at this college and i thought that was delicious because as you move things start to move and you know you can tell the whole story there yeah the birds are moving um uh, i wouldn't call this really animation but then we we sort of now that we are moving into the whole idea of simulated motion in in a natural space without any digital intervention you know just the the motion of the sunlight on the wall was was magic enough you know though all these women are again individually animated frame by frame so if you put them together they start to read books and all that uh we got very very excited we got another offer this time to do a fancy cafe in mumbai in the kamla mills area which is full of cafes and cafes and cafes a bombay canteen is there in kamla mills uh so it's called tappa we did this for uh, light bite foods dabar and the idea was that hey we're going to give you an animated cafe okay where what's going to happen is that tappa tappa is uh, tappa tappa means in punjabi tappa is 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 tappa you know the ball does tappa it bounces and in animation the first first assignment that you really do is called the bouncing ball you know so it was like right up our street and you know and we said oh the sun is bouncing across the sky and the you know heart is bouncing in your chest and the your your pulse is bouncing and everything is bouncing so we animated about 52 characters uh who were, who were all moving like that you know and uh, so there was this installation uh with all these characters on it and the animation of that was being projected on on a on on the on the roof and on certain parts of the cafe okay and uh 
you know something curious happens uh, for the non initiated people who don't really understand what goes behind the animation is that uh, you you see an image right next to you and then you notice that hey it's in motion and then you realize that oh that image is repeated many times here uh, it it plays with your mind there's something that happens with your mind something which we had sort of figured out in the hospital thing where the artworks were there uh, but uh, the film playing in the ward was tripping the kids out you know uh, we couldn't really hear any kid crying in that ward so i was trying to push that same experiment in this particular space uh, unfortunately there was a fire in kamla mills and then things went haywire uh, i am not sure if this cafe still exists uh, but yeah it was great fun doing it and it was it was fun doing it and we sort of tried to push the envelope as much as we could in this whole space or this whole idea of again non digital um, animation in spaces and uh, and frankly you know uh, when i had gone to the dilwada temple or i don't know bilwada dilwada temple in mount abu uh, and i was a young kid who had not joined animation i was still in my foundation the sequential images that i saw in the temple felt like frame by frame animation is happening all the women who were dancing they were all in separate poses in each of the sculptures that we saw and uh, they were all right next to each other and i was like oi they are moving these guys are moving you know i mean they are frozen but they are moving okay so pushing that idea in into these kind of spaces uh, i thought it was quite exciting the team was very excited the clients were equally excited okay tappa i just quickly take you through this okay uh, then then came a very interesting assignment really and i and i am quite grateful for this project that came my way uh, this was the front facade of the bikaji kama place metro station okay and uh, and i mean and we were lucky that you know the facade is high up there okay but there was a flyover that runs across the metro station so if you get onto the flyover you can see the whole facade it's at eye level okay and uh, interestingly uh, the flyover is not going like that it's at the stable space where the facade is there at the back and the flyover is moving in front of it okay so this time uh, this time we try to uh, excuse me we shut the door this time we try to uh, use the reverse where the the individual is sitting yeah i mean normally the whole business of moving images is that you sit in an auditorium you sit and watch and there are images being bombarded at you right uh, and then the thought was what happens if i make the audience sit sorry if i make the audience move and keep the images static you know will i get the same effect i am told in some metro somewhere am i audible Yes, yes, Charles, you're audible. Yeah. So the thought was that instead of keeping the audience static and the images moving, what happens if you make the the audience move and keep the image static? Okay. And as I was saying, I am I am told that there is some stuff in the Berlin Metro or something where this experiment has been very very successful. So at a rudimentary level, one was trying to do something like that. I'm talking about this this facade. Okay. This is not a great image. Okay. Yeah, this facade. Uh, using using uh, M C Escher a little bit, you know the whole geometry of things, and telling the story of uh, Gail. Gail was the client for this. Arit Bharat Hetu Kriya Shil, yeah, towards a greener India. Uh, so we we tried to tell a story of the water, the ship, the fish, the bird, the bird, the books, and education, happiness, blah blah. Okay, uh, it was about. Four hundred or four hundred and fifty feet long. Okay, so the expanse was not that much, uh, and the idea was that if someone is driving past and just looked on the side, they would feel a they would feel emotion. Okay, uh, for us since we had done it, it was working. Uh, we were insecure whether it worked or not. Uh, then. Uh, Hindustan Times was doing some stuff on public art, and they approached us, 
and uh, so we said hey we haven't done public art this is animation that's going on okay this is animation for the masses and all of that so they were like no 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 we were talking about public art and stuff so so the conversation sort of it got over there then about 3 months later i see a newspaper article which talks about the moving artworks at the bikaji kama place metro station and for that i don't know that article was like um acknowledgement like oh wow it worked and and um, that article sort of said that hey we went and tried it and it worked so i was like thank you thank you for trying it and thank you for the acknowledgements so uh this particular project was for me the most exciting project that i have ever done because you don't have to uh go to a website you don't have to go to a cinema hall you don't have to load the film through your pen drive uh, you don't have to go into a space to see something you were just this the bikaji kama police metro station is on the way to the airport you were just on the road going somewhere and just by chance you get to see this um i i thought that was quite fascinating and it was quite uh, it was a good feeling as an artist you know that your work can be viewed just like that you know so yeah bikaji kama place metro station uh then uh with iiad students and all of that uh, we work with a company called tricolor india show spiel uh private limited and we attempted to do the we, we did the national museum of india uh, janpat here again <clears throat> we were pushing the idea of expanded animation you know and sort of bring taking it out of screens uh but since it was very high tech there was a lot of tech involved so things moving on the pillars and you know if if you're talking about buddha i'm mean, talking about the the migration of people from india into the other parts of the world blah blah uh, lots of lots of things happened here lots of proposals were made it's finally done not all proposals were accepted and approved this has got nothing to do with expanded animation yeah uh, you know like um uh, hand gesture flip books you just put your hand on top of it if you've been to national museum you can go try this in the buddha buddha gallery you just do that and 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 the pages turn digitally and they have a 3d effect etc but <clears throat> this is the screen is there but it's not really a screen you're just projecting but something something innovative was definitely going on which was good fun uh then we did a 370 projection now this is a normal proper film but it is it is an immersive experiential thing uh which is again playing it plays i think all the time at the national museum uh in the 270 projection room Uh, where we did one film on the ramayan we did one film on the ragmala where you enter the space and these three walls surround you and and there's a film going on you know um, interesting i don't know how expanded it is but but very very charming some frames from the film uh, this is something that i i was really dying to do but it never got approved this is the the entrance the reception of the national museum and with projection mapping one could do stuff like this you know and then this and then this you know uh <clears throat> because of the tech and the cost and the blah 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 uh, this never really saw the light of day but it was quite charming and we did figure out where to place the projectors what to do its experiments were done around this so maybe some other day moving on moving on moving on uh, i've been associated uh, uh, with uh, a gentleman who's a renowned global puppeteer called shri dadi padam ji and uh, he also happens to be a senior of mine from college and he's been a friend for a long time and uh, we've been so friend for a long time is why i've put this picture and i put this picture and uh, we've been talking about collaborating you know dadi kuch karte hai na dadi kuch karte hai na so dadi did give me an opportunity to work on his show uh, called when land becomes water uh, where we animated uh, illustrations done by a lady called neeta prenchan uh, with fancy paper uh, animation <clears throat> and uh, uh, that's the show we did in moscow so uh, projections and and dadi's unique style of of puppetry 
you know, uh, he used these huge, huge masks. It's, it's almost like a ballet, theater, musical performance uh, with live orchestra, etc. And uh, bringing in this whole business of projected images uh, along with his kind of work for me was very, very satisfying. And I suppose Dadi was equally happy and satisfied. So now the thing is that, uh, you know, Dadi is a great master. Okay. Uh, he's a master puppeteer and he is a king of his craft and he knows what, when, how, where. Uh, so if if he looks even partially satisfied with what's going on, uh, he doesn't have to say very good, you know. If he doesn't, if he doesn't say very bad, that means all is well, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> so there was. I mean, I, I was encouraged, and I suppose that he was equally encouraged. That something interesting is happening. These two forms are sort of meeting, and and because he, you know, he uses puppeteers, dancers, actors, music as his main theme, uh, animation as again one little little aspect of his larger production. So then uh, I got encouraged and I was urging him, sir, shall we do a production? You know, and then the pandemic came in. Uh, this is from when land becomes water. And during the pandemic, we spent a lot of time together uh, online, uh, trying to crack, crack a show on Jalaluddin Rumi's work, you know. And uh, he's a Persian poet and he talks about love. Good things, all good things he talks about, you know, things that the world needs to hear right now. Uh, and Dadi was most uh, most encouraging in this whole process. He was the the guiding light. He knew exactly what he wanted, and uh, uh, I sort of worked on the script with him, and uh, and then the, he he sort of directed the whole performance. Uh, but one interesting aspect of this particular project was that. Uh, the AI had just come in, you know, AI generated images. Yeah, you know, the mid journey had just happened and other small uh, uh, apps that you could play with and create uh, create images. Uh, so uh, again, coming from the ethos that the artist uses the material of their time, I was quite excited about this whole AI thing. Uh, AI as a, as a method of generating images and uh, and since I was teaching also at the same time, uh, and I had a gang of students working on this project with me to create the backgrounds for it, you know, uh, we we used mid journey and AI generated images and tried to figure out a process as to how to tame the beast, you know, uh, how to do best practices in terms of what is it that I want, what is it that this guy is offering me. How can we put it together? How can we enhance what we want? It reduces time like crazy. So uh, these are some, we've done about eight performances in seven cities uh, and we look forward to more. Uh, these are just some images from the show. But uh, what is exciting about this particular one that I want to share with you is using AI as a tool to create images and uh, to create animations, uh, which sort of looks surreal, you know. So the process was that uh, you make an image and you feed that into the AI thing. And then the AI does versions of it. Okay, you take out the versions that you like, you mix and match and you make an, make an artwork. Uh, then since AI was very, very new, and uh, even though you read all the terms and conditions and blah, blah, uh, and the terms and conditions say, oh, the image is the owners, the whoever is using the platform, the image belongs to them, the blah, blah, you know, but I, I didn't trust that. So uh, I got an artist friend and I made them repaint this new image that we had created using the AI, you know, just to be on the safe side so that nobody sues you or something, you know. But uh, I thought the the impact... Or, uh, now these are all different places. This is Ahmedabad, I think. Uh, this was IHC Delhi. This, I think, is Goa. You know, where the characters sort of interact with the background. The background sort of interacts with the with, with the characters. Uh, and, and something interesting and magical and surreal happens on the screen. You know, uh, and because of the language of the AI, uh, it becomes even more magical, 
you know. Uh, we are still in the process of playing with this particular performance uh, and bringing in more, more, more value to the stage performance. Uh, we've it's been received pretty well, but I would just like to share some thoughts about it. You know, like the whole business of animation coming out of screen and onto other mediums and materials, you know, spaces and surfaces. Like another very interesting thing that happens with this performance is that no stage is the same. Each stage is different, you know. So therefore, as you can see, uh, you know, sometimes you're, we are hanging a cloth. Sometimes we're just projecting on the wall that is available. Sometimes you get LED screens, uh, etc. The So each performance becomes actually a fresh and a new performance, you know. And uh, I just wanted to read this bit out. You know, as to how do how does one use animation as a medium in a live scenario to maybe break that fourth wall concept? You know, uh, how, how do things which are supposed to be static as a background, uh, when they start moving and interacting with characters, and if we push that envelope a little further, uh, I think it it will create uh, ex experiential magic. Uh, so I hope I was quick, and I hope I didn't take too much of your time. Uh, what's the time? It's eight eleven. So I've done my forty minute ish. Was I good and fast? So uh, yeah, I mean this is another another frame from that thing from Rumiana. And uh, yeah, thank you. I think that was wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm, I would like to inform everyone that we'll be taking all the Q&A. We'll be going forward with the Q&A session. Uh, so I would request everyone to put their questions in the Q&A box so that uh, we can start answering them for you. We already have some very interesting questions. Uh, I'll just go Shibangi, on. Can, uh, can I kick start with a, with a question yes. for mine? And then we'll, we'll yes. get there as well. Right? Yeah. Um, so thank you, Shaz. And uh, you. it's always a pleasure. Normally, uh, Shaz and I would have this conversation sitting in a uh, in, in, in the open space somewhere. But this is also good. Shaz, uh, something that has always excited me about your work is your um, your willingness to experiment and challenge the status quo while being so passionate about you know what you do in fact your passion fuels the experimentation normally what happens is that we become very very attached to this is how it is done this is how it has to be done you know you you said at the beginning uh, referring to your alma mater this is my temple you know, and yep. when you say temple, then you we, we all start holding things in such high esteem that we said, Kuch hilana nahi hai, ye aise hi hona chahiye. Ye mm. aise hi hota hai. You know, we, we must, this is how it has to be done. Let me honor the way it has to be done, right? And that can sometimes be an antithesis to uh, experimentation. But I see you hold your craft with that, say, with that uh, reverence and yet at the drop of a hat, I know that if one has to excite Shaz, just spell experiment halfway and he will he'll jump at it, right? So, so ye to, this I'm so this predictable, huh? <laughs> So this little Bhumika I put up, but my my question to you on behalf of young uh, and experienced design professionals, what do you think is the value of experimentation in today's world when? predictability this will work give me a guarantee that this will work this will give me the results return on investment mm. yeah tell me that this will this will be accepted tell me my audience my this whatever whatever you know when you're looking for guarantee and predictability right, right? so in that what do you think is the value of experimentation Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to quote uh, Nadi Padamji, who who what what I really learned from him in this endeavor, this this whole project. He said, "Don't fall in love with your work." 
Charles, don't fall in love with your work. Don't fall in love with what you do. Okay, be be open to that. So uh, that was a huge one uh, because I would I would be teaching in college and then I would go to him and he would and suddenly I'd be a student, you know. Uh, now uh, talking about uh, experimentation and uh, will the client get what they want, you know. So what I can tell you is that as a professional, you know that this is how it works. Okay, so. Uh, so you are not doing something which is like a random experiment. You know, it's not out of the blue somewhere. Yeah, there is a whole method, there's a process, and you're just tampering with certain things of it. You know, uh, so you very carefully maneuver that, and you say, and you as a as as the maker or whatever, you know that I'm tampering with only this much, which will change the whole thing. You know, but but largely it'll be the same thing only. I don't know. Did that make sense? So, no, no, but no, what happens in this? You're saying, you're saying that do a controlled experiment. So you keep. It is a controlled experiment. You can't you, fail. You, you keep some things constant, and you keep uh, and you variate some some things. Ah, uh, you see, keep certain things constant, but uh, but you 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 play with certain like for example in Rumiana, uh, I was struggling for a long time to figure out the visual language. You know, and Dadi was not satisfied. Okay. Uh, he would just keep bouncing left, right, and center. This is a bakwas. This is bakwas. This is... In fact, what was approved also was initially rejected. You know, it was rejected, and then again, three months of work went behind, and then he came back and said, "No, no, that what you did, not do that." Okay, so uh, 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 so as an experiment, I was experimenting in the visual language of the moving image. I knew how to move the image. I knew how the image will move. What the image will really look like? Will it look like a Persian miniature? Will it look like an Indian miniature? Will it look like Kalibadi paintings? Will it look like which is what I was throwing at him all the time? You know, uh, trying to build context. Okay, uh, but so uh, what was successful was the fact that one was able to manipulate and maneuver and wrestle with AI as a medium to create a certain kind of imagery, and once blown on that scale. You know, it it automatically starts to look a certain way. So, uh, and that has been an approach in most of the work, frankly. You know, uh, if a ball comes in and goes boom, you know, you can draw the ball. You can do it with sand. You can take actual clay and do it. If you fit the context right, it will work. I think. So that actually creates a seg uh, interesting segue for Raghav's question. Uh, okay. Do you think non-digital animation? Could be used in a way intuitively navigate in a, as a way to intuitively navigate complex spaces. So what he's talking about is non-digital animation Correct. being used for wayfinding. Beautiful, great yeah? idea, great idea. Yeah. So great idea. In fact, I had this dream that if you see all those Mumbai slums, which look very glamorous as you go on the highway, <laughs> you know. Uh, if you could animate on that, you know, uh, as but you give it its own identity, and yes, wayfinding, of course, it's fab another, you know, like you, it's, it's another window that you've opened. This question is another window, and a, and a huge set of possibilities that open up just by the question itself is 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 a window. By the way, I do want to tell you that the that uh, that your dream idea for the National Museum, the projection on the arches and all of that. Uh, I would have loved it uh, had it been uh, executed with the no, one. What fun you're standing and yeah. the and and time periods are changing, you know. No, and I also Gupta think that it, it will be such an interesting learning tool, uh, Shaz, because if you that, that's what you take people, you know, children or whoever. I mean, you go to museums to learn about culture and uh, you know visual languages and uh, history and all of that, and uh, for you to only see them in a two dimensional. Yes. For image, because that uh, that's all that is left. Or if I have to experience it three dimensionally, I have to go to all these places. That space. It's a great huh. thing to do, which is a huh. great thing to do. Yes. But uh, yeah, so it would have been wonderful if that could have been uh, executed. But I do understand 
the the, the cost and the harm the, yeah, the, the cost viability, of it, cost the viability of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so wo desirable viable feasible ke andar desirable and feasible to tha but viability mein wo drop kiya we had cracked kahan pe kya projector lagega we had experimented yeah, yeah. also uh, but no, i mean we should dream on even if they can't come ha, 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 of course we should dream on right? so that's why i yes yes absolutely yeah. so and i'm so glad that you shared that i mean you know not only uh, you even shared what was not executed so hmm. i want to take another uh, question here uh, is uh, what would be your advice for freshers who are trying to kick start their career and i think this is about generally not just animation uh, what would you tell somebody who wants to kick start their career in design visual design communication design any aapne bana liya apne wo list of 3 4 things jo safed bal ke sath aa jate hain um what what fresher um today that that kid came who was joining scad yeah yeah they want uh, yeah he asked the same question uh, so the answer, i don't know you know when you're learning a craft a new craft uh, a skill uh, it can be learned these things can be learned okay uh, i think the first step is to just do bo in it you know and and know what's going on if you know or, and and be friends with all the rules you know keep questioning the rules but make friends with all the rules and follow them okay uh once you follow the rules the rules start telling you hey you don't have to follow me don't be stupid stupid you know uh, i think that's where the game starts so you first follow the rule and then you start breaking the rules you know and as you break the rules something interesting happens and uh, in my particular in my experience uh, uh i i uh, when i teach especially animation i would say uh, don't think just do you know don't think do okay and when you don't think and do some accidents happen and the magic is in that accident that happens so there so, is also this whole idea of thinking uh, by doing na i mean if you if you move your hands uh, automatically the thinking things, can... things starts to things start to emerge but if you follow the rules to begin with ki a aise likhte hain aur b aise likhte hain pehle wo likh to lo you know uske baad fir aap karo na calligraphy jo marzi hai you know once you make friends with the rule then then the rule becomes your friend and you can just break it you know and uh, and and i think that makes life exciting it keeps you young though my hair is turned white but uh, i think it keeps you young and keeps that you on that must be the, that must be the dye uh, working na wo to aapne white dye kar liye you're still young uh, correct <laughs> correct <laughs> okay a couple of questions around ai right and okay. i think we should actually have a shubhang AI, uh, going beyond uh, design and uh, people are very scared of the AI. You know, I also had a question about uh, uh, AI actually, uh, um, which is just the opposite of questions that I've been hearing about AI, which is like the will humans go away? Will they take over my jobs and this and that? Uh, it was an observation followed by a question, which is essentially you go back, you keep your references are so much in the history. You keep talking about your Kalibari paintings and the Indian miniatures and the Persian miniatures. And when you began this presentation, also you started with the history of animation and what it has come to, and the 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 the, the like the kind of uh, assumption that people would have about animation would be that it is not so much about. Um, history or something that is uh, for example when you were showing that project that is in the national museum which is sort of a period uh, uh, animation that you are uh, showcasing period film that you are showcasing on the walls ramayan yeah yeah mm. so you keep you keep on going back to the history and then uh, how would you like and then you went to rumiana where you sort of used mid journey to sort of create these visuals that are still rooted in the history maybe yeah. uh, so yes. how do you how do you mix that how do you come to that intersection where uh you also borrow from the history but you're also looking forward and you're looking at an ai to use uh, what you've learned from history and to produce something that is new and interesting and experimental you know this is rather a scientific process uh history of science or history of physics or anatomy or whatever you do it's very linear you know nothing comes out of nowhere everything comes out of something there was something then therefore something happened and then therefore something happened and then therefore something happened so this is very very linear okay 
and uh, um, just the way you think AI is a big deal today, uh, when somebody who, when an artist once upon a time, uh, in in troubled times of their time, you know, an artist who had to feed his stomach had to make small paintings so that he could hide them in his jacket and travel. You know, he could not carry a huge canvas. So I would say that's the birth of the Indian miniatures. No, you you made miniatures so that they could be they could be carried easily. You know, and then you went to the raja and you showed him this new miniature that you made and you got your gold coins. Uh, so uh, uh, and 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 they are they have stood the test of time. Uh, and they are a part of your legacy and the way your space has thought about that thing. I'm not talking about Western art. Uh, your your space has has looked at color and form, and you're just following that same same thing. Actually, you know, I mean, if you you have to be true to yourself, truth truth is important. So you have to be true to yourself and and see where things are coming from, and of course where they're going. You know. Uh, but then my identity is where I am rooted. Uh, and if I don't, um, yeah, I mean, what, what you're looking for on the branches is actually in the roots. Yeah, Ruby says. <laughs> you know? yeah, and also, you can't have a tree with branches, but without a root. You Anji. can still have a tree with roots, but ah. uh, whose branches All are... All the magic is happening in the roots, Sundi. Yeah. You know, ah. you can see the apple outside, but the magic is happening in the roots. So if you are if you are only interested in eating the apples, great, you know. But if you want to figure out what the hell is going on, uh, you'll have to make friends with the roots, I guess. Uh, and to and 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 I don't know. In terms of tools, times change, and with time, tools change. You know, uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I I tell my students if there was Michelangelo today, he would be using the iPad. You know, he would be using the iPad, okay? Because he was using the iPad of his time. And you check any artist, they were all using, I mean, when, when the light bulb was invented, Picasso was painting with light, you know? Or when photography came in. Now, what does he do? So he's using those mediums as his tools, you know? Uh, so he, he's, uh, yeah, yeah, Picasso painting with, with light or Dali doing that, if you've seen that water falling cat jumping, Dali lying, you know, so he's using photography as a medium to to do his thing. Or David Hockney doing the Polaroid camera had just come in, so he's using all those. Oh, you must use the tool of your time and not get scared of it. You know, otherwise people would say, "Oh, photography आ गया, अभी art का क्या ज़रूरत है?" Shaz, if I may just add a quick two bit to it, uh, also. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation around AI has to be at two dimensions, uh, at least two, if not more. One dimension is using AI as a tool, right? Mm -hmm. The way you use mid-journey as a tool for uh, for your idea generation. It is but a tool. Uh, yeah. No, I think there is. And when we step out of the conversation around professions and employability, etc., and we look at AI at a social level, what okay. is AI doing at a social level? Now, that is a separate conversation. And my, uh, what do you mean social level? At a, at a, at a... So, so when, when, when your environment is getting controlled through AI, through algorithms, uh -huh. the projection of reality that I am experiencing mm -hmm. is getting altered through the use of algorithms. Yes. Right. So I'm not talking about chat GPT or mid journey. I'm talking at that level. Right. Mm -hmm. That's when your worldview will begin to change and not for you and me only because we have whatever, 40 plus years of life before yes. us. Yes. But it is changing and that's going to change the fabric of the society. And that, I think, is a separate conversation. The problem that I have normally is that you don't know what to do. In fact, I have, a, I have a slightly bizarre theory huh. which says that, uh, you know, uh, the kind of images that Mid Journey is creating or AI is creating, these fabulously rich, detailed, gorgeous colors, oof, delicious images. Okay. Now, uh, you and I find them delicious because we haven't seen so many of those images in the past. You know, or we saw it in that film or we saw it in so-and-so's painting. You know, it was sparse, okay? But a 10-year-old, I mean, my kids, a 10-year-old, uh, they are born in this time, so they will see these images, okay? Again and again and again and again and again and again. These rich images, okay? 
they will get insensitive to it and so uh, if i may say so i think we are all going to go back to the square and the circle and the triangle yes. you know and priyat mondrin is start going to make more sense and all that kendinsky and his theories <laughs> start making we are going to go back it's it's like what picasso did in his journey of simplification you know uh, he went back you know to wo hoega mere ko lagta hai in terms of aesthetics and visual oh, language um yeah i mean i i in any case i mean uh, uh, there are a few other questions around ai but i think for the for the purpose of this webinar we've addressed ai sufficiently and i won't be taking any further this, ha, but there's nothing to be scared about the ai at all yeah. it's the same reaction as when computers came in people thought their their jobs will go you know uh, or people thought that computer will do the animation that's not true human beings sit and do the animation even on a software okay the computer doesn't do animation okay computer facilitates it so a film that took 10 years to make now takes 2 years to make it saves time okay similarly an image that used to take maybe 3 days to make now gets done in 3 seconds okay so it is just expediting the process but it's not going to replace anything okay and uh, I, view, I think humans already... have to humans have to learn to use new tools and therefore yeah. you and it adapt, is democracy adapt to the changing adapt to the changing environment so earlier yeah. you would travel by horse carts and bullock carts and now Correct. you travel by uh, vehicles and now you also travel by you know electronic vehicles yeah. e vehicles and so on and so forth so you adapt to it uh shaz i'm going to move on because there are a lot of questions that yes, are coming yes, in yes. and i want to i want to be able to take as many as possible right, right? costa basts what should be the approach in making a short animated film what process should one follow as a beginner uh, what is the story you want to tell and how urgently do you want to tell that story you know the urgency with which you would want to tell that story uh, will make sure that the film happens you know because i think to sustain interest for a long duration on one thing i think that is a secret you know if you can dream of a film for one year and continue to dream of it with that same passion for that one year you will make that film you know so. okay so there are a couple of uh, fans uh, of your work so there really <laughs> a couple awesome. of people are telling you <laughs> that uh, uh, but there's uh, i'll pick the questions from uh, right. those accolades uh can someone who doesn't have a great hand dexterity and drawing skills mm. aspire to pursue this oh absolutely in fact i teach animation and i say if you don't know drawing brilliant good news okay because then you will push extra buttons you know to rep- to figure out representation you know you might start looking at a carrot you know and make two dots and say here is the character you know you don't have to draw no you don't have to draw if you can draw good for you you know lots of people are drawing nobody is animating the carrot start you know so your your innovation has already begun you know i um, also think that it's not yeah, about representation yeah it's not only yeah. about the representation it's also about the vi- so you can think visually you can notice you can you know i think the 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 core of visual you, you can be yeah you can be more charming in creating your visuals yeah. if you can't draw them then collect them and and make something really wild um, it it would work it would set you apart from the word go and sometimes that limitation itself is the birth or the seed of innovation na? the so called yes. limitation the so called yes. limitation that i can't draw so so i look at the carrot and i say okay i, I can't draw i'm going to i'm going to use the carrot because it looks somewhat like a character let me add two dots and Make oh, the, oh, I mean, I just said carrot. It can be anything in the world. Yeah, anything, so I'm saying that anything. that can be the birth of innovation. So if yeah. I if I can't draw, maybe let me use Mid Journey to. <laughs> yes. And, yes. And, yes. Yeah. Let's see how you use that as a tool, yeah. and yeah. let's see what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll answer. I'll ask this question and answer this question uh, both. Uh, they are saying that if they want to learn from Shaz, where where should they enroll? So. at and or iid you enroll wow. and then you you you, you get must tell you in this yeah. <laughs> and and you you will get to <laughs> learn from a, not all the time from shaz but yeah uh, so that's one uh, shaz there are a couple of more questions but i wanted to pick your brain on one more thing right um, and that will be probably the last intellectual question that i'll throw at you uh, you know the question between the medium 
and the process. Okay. Yeah. So there are there are processes or procedures or steps mm -hmm. to follow. And you started, I think, by saying that animation is a very process-driven, technically pro uh, driven mm -hmm. process, you know, That's frame by gone. frame by frame, yes. uh, this and this and this, then you do this and then you do this and then you do that and, you know, so mm -hmm. process. And I think a lot of times people think of it as either a process-driven uh, discipline, animation, that's the general, this thing. Or they think of it as a skill-driven uh, mm -hmm. because they think yeah. that you have to illustrate and this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but my interactions with you uh, have revealed to me that it can also be medium-driven. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And I yes. see that you have experimented with your medium, right? So between yes. the medium and the process, who is the king here? And who is the... Is Shatranj ki bisaat pe baatshah koon hai, or rani koon hai, or wazir koon hai? Is it the medium or the process? Huh? Or if uh, there is a third one, or the story? No, it is the context actually. It is the context that informs your medium. And once the medium is informed, then you figure out a process. You know, ki wahaan pe toh aise karte te, ab yahaan pe kya karenge? Which is what Rani, I meant when I said that each Rani project... Rani is a context. Yes, Rani, you can say that Raja is also a Dada Ji is actually. Yes, what is it that you want to say? You know, and if, if you want to say something uh, like hair in the tortoise, how do you say it? If you want to talk about um, Sindhbad, the sailor, how do you say that? If you want to talk about the, uh, what's it called, Dracula, how do you say that? Uh, so it is, you know, each 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 narrative will bring up a new language. In fact, if I may say so, uh, Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Wow, <laughs> you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, last three questions. Uh, is there a difference between graphic design and animation and illustration? What is the difference between the three? How would you describe? Officially, they're all three very different things. Uh, Animation is moving images. Largely, graphic design is pure color form in space. Uh, illustration always has a client. <laughs> you know, there is a text that has to be illustrated, uh, or there is a new. There's a there is a there's a illustration is only content based. Yeah, animation can be whimsical. Graphic design can be play and fun. Uh, illustration is very, I don't know, that's how I, in fact, I did illustration okay, this morning. Can I attempt this? So oh, please. You at graphic design, right? Uh, where you have various visuals and text coming. Color, out. form, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, visual elements and all. Yeah. So, I look at illustration as one of the, one of the elements or components of, or medium of graphic design. Okay, animation is when you bring one more element into it, that element of time and space. Time and space, yes, absolutely. The moment you bring that's time nicely and put, space yes. as another element. So if I yes. do graphic design, I'm combining line, shape, form, color, yeah. pattern, text, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I add the element of time and space to it mm. to create movement, mm. Or to create, like in, like your in your work, sometimes it is the sense of movement. It's the sense of movement, yes. Or yeah. if I may say, if I may add the nude descending the staircase, Marshall Dusham. Yeah. What is it? It's graphic design, it's animation, it's illustration. What is it? It's the work of masters when they bend the rules and they bend the rules and they change the definitions. Ko change karne lagte. Was but this a question? This was a this question. This was a question uh, uh, somebody asked, and I thought we'll take it. That what's the difference between graphic design and animation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so simply put, that is what I think. When you add right. the element of time and space to create motion or a sense of movement, to then then graphic design becomes animation. Right. Right. Okay. So the next one is um, interesting. Where. Some I, I'll shorten the question because it's very big. So I'll shorten it that uh, do you think that it can be distracting and uh, a cause for you know accidents uh, if there are uh, pay, if the walls in the city are painted like the way you in your, some of your work and in a lot of cities also there is wall art you know all around. So it can distract people when they are moving and uh, cause 
accident so what is your opinion uh, because he came up place metro uh, metro station panel when i uttered it for the first time that was the reaction i got okay uh, are are nahi nahi ye to accident ho jayega mika waisa bhi nahi hoga baba it is just 400 feet baba it's it's a little it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity to try this out you know uh, as i said i think it happens in berlin metro or something so you are inside the metro no accident is going to happen um yeah i mean if it is done on the pillars on the road on the on the, on the, on that poles on the road yeah it will it will you will have an accident so yeah. you have, one has to be careful uh, about where you put uh, art where, in, yes in yes. in uh, in uh, in uh, in city landscape yes. that yes. uh so you won't do it where signage and where so that it starts uh, disrupt, disrupting the vision of the road that i have to take and all of that it's it's it's, it's like a small teaspoon of you know bas usse zara nahi i mean not in i said to matlab billboards and advertising and correct, uh, correct. Uh, absolutely graffiti and and even a beautiful uh, uh, a beautiful uh, building or mere jaisa koi hoga to if there are flowers growing uh, Uh, and if if, the, if i'm driving through a canopy of gulmohar trees i can right. i can look up and uh, that's enough distraction yes, for me is, or if yes, it's raining yes. or if there's a flight of birds then it can be distracting but at that time i have to keep my heart and charm in control na that okay i'm driving and there are yes. there are lives yes. my, not only mine but others at risk and please stop if i want to enjoy the gulmohar flowers then i'll park my car on the side and enjoy the gulmohar flowers mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i think it's that also no so my team said that please don't mention this animation again sir wo nahi karne denge hame so hum artwork bana rahe hain na kaha animation mein kisne bola hai animation mein i think i think uh, um i i i think uh, i had something to add to that so you see that inside metro stations you will see a lot of these um artworks happening i think that is more on the lines of that it's a respite from the mundane from what what you're looking at all the time and then that is sort of a respite from that so like exactly you said it's a teaspoon of masala in your day just so. that much yeah just that much yeah so Otherwise very, quick, it might be very quickly two last questions uh ha, though i don't know i mean if you can answer it i uh, you can how old uh, is the shadow puppet art uh, in india and ha- is it origin did it originate in india or did it come from a foreign country shah it's a that's factual a, question, question for dati padam ji ha <laughs> yeah i think shahs and i are not uh, historical Haan. experts on this but i puppetry, do know no. that puppetry is dadi's forte and sh- I, shadow I puppetry in india it exists it also exists in southeast asian countries but i don't know the yeah. origin of the it kholu so bombalata puppets in the south yeah. and all of that that's all i know nothing more than that last question uh, is it a good idea to start my design journey with graphic design as the base and then move to animation slash motion graphics is that yes. the yeah is that a good idea shah Absolutely. Actually, uh, if I may add, I think for any of the so-called, jinko we put all of them into uh, the the umbrella of communication design. I think for all of those, graphic design is the base. So even for it is, she's the mother. Yes, design, absolutely. User interface design, um, uh, animation, motion graphics. For all of those, uh, a good way to start is to first, you know, uh, try get your and, composition right. Yes, get yeah. your composition right. Get your visual communication right. Yeah, and get your get your get your dis- brain thinking like a designer. Yes, yes. First, do that, and yeah. then these are. Then make it move. Yeah. Yeah. Then make it move. Then make it do all of those. So yes. yes. Uh. So Shubhangi, uh, we've cleared all the question and answers. Shaz and I can continue to talk for a very long time. Uh. and uh, okay there's last question what is this uh, okay it's just a cover of what you've written from ex- on the walls of hospital to national museum and to ai backdrops of puppetry yes that's a good capture of what shah's shared today thank you mitali for that and uh, thank uh, it's always lovely shah's catching up with you and uh, oh, thank you yeah the good old good opportunity is good fun thank you uh, good old adda 
uh, we should have actually uh, called this the design adda but i think a lot of people use adda uh, you know uh, so, differently ha uh, yeah so i like kaleidoscope and thank you for uh, kick starting uh, kaleidoscope for us uh, shaz my thank you, thank you. my heartfelt gratitude to you uh, for always being part of and uh, not many people know but shaz has been part of the uh founding think tank of and uh... oh yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> right so thank you shaz thank for you. that thank you. and um, yeah i'll i'll hand it back to shubhangi thank you all 61 of you 60 of you who are still here that's so kind thank you so much but there were 100 of them yeah yeah okay yeah. so uh, thank you so much sir for your wonderful presentation it's it was an absolute delight to be a part of this session uh, thank you prachi ma'am for joining us thank you all uh, who have stayed behind uh, for this session um we'll uh, i'm hoping we'll keep having these sessions on a regular basis now so keep an eye out on our social channel so that you get all of these notifications about whenever these sessions are happening and join us um uh so good night uh thank you for joining us bye bye thank you good night bye